Hey guys, I know how this must look. It looks like I've drank the Kool-Aid for the Ego Plus ecosystem. And uh, yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> Was it a mistake? Let's find out. Okay, right up front, I do wanna say this is absolutely not a sponsored video. I bought all of these pieces with my own money. I'm not being compensated in any way to offer these opinions, and these will be my honest opinions of what I have here. Uh, and uh, I bought these things from Home Depot. I'll leave some Amazon links in the description. I'm not sure if that's the best place to buy these or not if you're interested, but you can at least pop on there and look at the uh, specs if you're, if you're so inclined. Now, about a year ago, I bought the, uh, this mower from Ego Power, and uh, I did a video on that. I'll put a, a link up here for you if you're interested in checking that out. Um, this, is, so this is about a, call it a 15 month follow up or thereabouts. Um, I continue to be extremely happy with this mower. It is superior to my T Toro personal pace mower, my gas powered mower in just about every way. Um, as I mentioned in the video, there's a slight difference in the cut quality. This thing does not generate, I think, as much updraft uh, in the cutting chamber as the, as the Toro does. And as a result, you will occasionally get uh, an uncut blade that pops up here and there. So if you get down and look at a freshly cut lawn from a, you know, from a low vantage point, you will see the odd occasional kind of high little straggler uh, strand of grass. Really not a big deal. It doesn't really bother me at all. And on balance, I, I would not go back to the uh, Toro personal pace. And I will say, uh, that they have recently introduced a new model called the Select Cut. It's about a hundred bucks more than this one, which I still think they sell this one. I think if I were to do it over again, I would probably go the Select Cut route and pay the extra hundred bucks. And really that was just because it does, it uses a uh, opposing spinning blade design uh, and uh, it should generate more updraft and give you a perfectly clean cut all the time. And again, for me, if that were the only benefit, I probably wouldn't spend the extra hundred bucks, but it does have some other things where on this newer select cut version, they move the, uh, the assist throttle uh, for, the, uh, for the drive assist up onto the handle so you don't have to take your hand off and adjust it from there. You can just adjust it via a twist. So it's much easier to keep both hands on the mower at all times. They also have some smaller things like the, uh, the battery life indicator gives you a little more granularity into how much power is left in the battery. This really only gives you uh, what appears to be full, 25% uh, or you're done, and that's it. So uh, it's, it's fine, it really is not a problem because I, I think I've only ever ran this out of battery power once, and that was when I forgot to charge it before I started mowing, so really not a big deal. So I, I would not hesitate to buy this mower again, although if I, hadn't, if I didn't already have this, I probably would spend the extra 100 bucks and get the select cut version. Now, since then, I have also acquired the trimmer about five or six weeks ago, and then about a week later, I went and bought the blower. And I wanna talk through those, that kind of decision-making process, um, because you're really buying into an ecosystem here. The battery technology that these all use is interchangeable, and you can buy the tools with or without the batteries. And there may be some advantage there, uh, but I'll, I'll get into that in a moment. Now, I opted for the trimmer. They make a couple different versions of this, and this is the least expensive one. I think the normal price for this is about 190, 189 bucks. I got it on sale for 169, 170, and this is the aluminum shaft one that has the manual wind option. So for, you know, 50 bucks more, you can get the carbon fiber shaft one, which is just a little bit lighter, but honestly, I didn't feel like it was that much lighter. And uh, it will have a, a pretty cool feature, which I think is fairly unique uh, in the industry right now. Probably won't be for long because everybody likes it, but you can press a button down here and it'll auto wind the trimmer, uh, the trimmer string. So that's pretty cool. I really didn't feel like it was worth it to me to pay the extra 50 bucks for that feature. I felt it was just one more thing that could go wrong and I didn't wanna pay for that. And I didn't think it was a big deal to manually wind it. Now, one nice surprise that I discovered versus my gas-powered Ryobi, which only holds about seven or eight feet maximum of string, uh, this thing holds like 15 feet of string. So I don't have to change it nearly as often, and it is fairly easy. I don't have to remove the entire head to change it like I do on the Ryobi. Um, I can line the little 
these, these little lines up on the, uh, on the string head here, um, pull the string through, even it up, and then I can manually sort of wind it up. Now, I will say that uh, some videos that I watched on this, at least the manufacturer videos, make it appear that it's super easy to do that. And I actually struggled with it the first time. I had difficulty getting the string into the chamber all the way out the other side. And it, maybe it's because of the string that I bought, uh, but it wasn't quite as easy as they made it look. And I, but I, I do think that now that I've kind of gotten the hang of it, it probably won't be as big of a deal. Um, and in any case, it certainly wasn't any harder than changing it on the Ryobi gas powered. In fact, it was a little bit easier and I don't have to do it as often. So I think on balance, I'm really happy with that decision. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back down. As I mentioned, you can get these things with or without the batteries. So this gives you an idea. This is, the big one is the seven and a half milliamp hour battery that comes with the mower if you buy it that way. And this is a two and a half milliamp hour battery. They make a 500 milliamp hour version you can get, but these batteries are really expensive. And so you kind of get a, get a sense for how big they are, but they're completely interchangeable. I can put the bigger mower battery on the trimmer or the blower for that matter and get ridiculous amounts of runtime. Uh, or I can just, if I really needed to in a pinch, let's say I forgot to charge this and I had a little bit left before I ran out to finish, I could throw one of these two and a half milliamp hour batteries in the mower and finish up. Um, and I will say that the, the mower charger that comes with it, it comes with a rapid charger. So it's a gray one. I'll put a picture up here so you can see what that looks like. That thing is phenomenal. It'll charge this, the, the big battery in well under an hour. So 40 to 45 minutes, it gives me pretty much an entire full charge on this monster seven and a half milliamp hour battery. Um, the charge unit that you get with these, if you buy them that way, is not the rapid charger. Uh, but frankly, if you have a rapid charger, you really won't even use these. Because if I forget to charge this when I'm ready to do the yard work, I pull the battery off the rapid charger, put it in the mower, put this on the rapid charger, and I guarantee you it'll be well topped off before I need it. So I've not even installed or even used these standard uh, battery chargers that came with the blower. I actually have two of them now. I don't use either one of them. I'm just using the one rapid charger, uh, and uh, it's, it's working for me just fine. Now I can put, as I mentioned, this guy onto the trimmer. I'll show you what that looks like. And this is probably not optimal because this is pretty substantial in weight, uh, but it, really it's, it only adds a little bit of weight. And as you can see, I mean, it's still bottom heavy. It's not counter weighing and, and I have to push down on the trimmer. So it still works. And in a pinch, you could do the whole lawn this way and it really wouldn't be a problem. Now, one of the things I like about all these tools, which is for me a, a big benefit, is they're substantially quieter than their gas or corded electric counterparts. So this thing isn't whisper quiet. You still get the noise of the string, but you don't have that, that two cycle engine blaring away right up here near your face. So I don't really need to wear ear protection when I'm using these tools, even the blower. Uh, but uh, having said that, the power that I get from this really is comparable. And in fact, I think the trimmer may be a little bit more powerful than my Ryobi uh, gas powered. And so I really have to take care around my wire fence that I don't get in too close and let it, let it grab because it will tear up that fence and go through string when you do that. Of course, it did that with my Ryobi as well, but this thing is certainly no less powerful and it really handles uh, large jobs with, uh, with relative ease and is at least as powerful as that gas, as that gas powered version. So you just hold the, uh, the safety down on the top and then you pull the trigger on the bottom and it's variable speed. So you can run it at a low speed or you can speed it up. And you can see it's not very loud right now. Now when you start cutting, it'll obviously be a little bit louder, but this is nothing. This is like a fraction of the volume of the gas powered version. So I'm really happy with this trimmer and uh, I feel like the money I saved by not getting the carbon fiber option and the auto winder um, was, was probably a wise choice. You may feel differently. You may really like that auto winder. I've heard good things about it. So it may be worth a look. Now, one thing I will point out, as I mentioned, these batteries are very expensive. The two and a half milliamp hour battery, if you buy it by itself, is like $135. I only paid $170 for the trimmer with the battery and a charger. So if you think of it like that, compared to the 135 single battery, I got, a, I got for 30 extra bucks, and again, this was the sale price, I got a charger and a trimmer. 
and I got the I got the blower for the same kind of a price point. It was 170 bucks. So it, in my case, I feel like it made no sense to not buy it with a battery. And so now I have two of the two and a half milliamp hour batteries and one of the seven and a half. But I got all the batteries I need for this particular ecosystem for now. And in fact, I probably couldn't have, I could have gotten by with just the one two and a half milliamp hour battery and just bought the tool only and saved myself uh, 20 or 30 bucks. But if the battery replacement costs 135, why not spend the extra 30 bucks or whatever it is and just get it with the battery? It's really a pretty good deal. So um, that's, that's how I, I made my decision. So taking a look at the blower, they make several versions of the blower as well. And so the blower, this is the 530 cubic feet per minute blower. It's their lowest power option. And I have to be honest, when I bought this, I wasn't quite sure that it was gonna get the job done. And I was a little bit worried because it was the least expensive one. And they offer like two more versions that are sig significantly more powerful. But I have to say, it's, it's got a little throttle on the front that tells you that allows you to dial it up or down. I just leave it in the top position because it also has this turbo button, which I'll show you a little bit closer here. And this turbo button dramatically amps up the, uh, the power draw and how much air you're moving. And it's more than adequate for anything that I need. Now I've got a corner lot and I've got a lot of sidewalk. It's only a quarter acre lot, so it's not a big lot, but I am on the corner. So I have a lot of sidewalk. I've got a really long driveway, uh, but this thing, easily with the two and, a half, two and a half milliamp hour battery covers all of that in the high position mode. And I think I can probably get, uh, don't quote me on this, but I can probably get 40, 45 minutes of constant runtime out of this uh, without using the turbo. The turbo will drain your battery. And occasionally I might use the turbo, but I really don't need to that often. This thing is more than powerful uh, enough to do what I need it to do. Now, if you're using a lot of wet leaves off, you're using it for that kind of thing, then the turbo button will help you and you might want to consider something bigger, but I think for most people, you will find that the 530 CFM uh, version is, is more than adequate. The one thing I will point out, when you use the turbo, this thing is very powerful. It'll actually push your hand backwards. So watch, watch what happens. I literally have to fight this thing a little bit because it's pushing my hand backwards. That was not me sort of exaggerating the motion. The turbocharge really does give me certainly more power than I really expected out of this thing. And I, and I do have to say, not having to deal with uh, oil changes, uh, getting my uh, oil gas mixture right on the trimmer, changing spark plugs, buying gas, lugging my electric cord around because the one that I had been using is an electric corded version and I have to worry about moving the cord between my lamp post and some trees to keep it from getting hung up. And as a result, it was not very convenient to get out and use. So I didn't use it very often. And when I did use it, I definitely had to wear ear protection because it was way louder than this, even though they're both basically electric. And uh, it would also vibrate my hand like crazy when my hand was actually tingling for 10 or 15 minutes. And I get a sore elbow out of that. So this is actually lighter weight, even with the battery but it's so convenient I get it out and use it all the time. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I am extremely happy with the Ego Power Plus uh, lawn tool system, and uh, I don't regret these purchases at all. I think if you're in the market for something like this, I think what you'll find when you finally jump in, if you haven't jumped in yet, is that you'll regret not having done it sooner because they are that much more convenient and easy to use as opposed to their gas powered counterparts. So anyway, I hope you found this information helpful. Give us a thumbs up if you did. Consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. We, out, we do outdoor videos and I do other gadget and tech time, kind of reviews as well. Uh, kind of whatever I feel like doing. But if that's your style, please join us. We'd love to have you along. But anyway, thanks for sticking around for the end of this video and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.